Greetings, seekers of the paranormal. Welcome to Paranormal M, your source for all things mysterious and unexplained. Subscribe and turn on notifications, drop a comment, and stay informed about our latest investigations. We promise to keep you captivated with our eerie tales. Tennessee Civil War Fort In the summer of 2022, I decided to take a summer class at my university during this season. This was so I could complete some of my course credits early. I took U.S. History 1 as one of these classes. During this class, one of the projects that my professor assigned me was to go to any historical site in Tennessee. That's where my university is. And at that location, I would write a report about it and its historical significance. Coincidentally, I saw online that there was a previous fortress from the Civil War that was renovated into a local park around 15 minutes away from my university. This was perfect for me because it meant that I could just go after my class and didn't get this project started early. So I went. At this park, everything was normal. It had normal things like a playground and some walking trails. And around the trails were some informational signposts about the war and how the fortress was utilized during that time. In the back of my mind, I was consciously aware of the fact that there was likely spirits around from that time. I didn't close myself off to this and tried to not feel fearful of this feeling. In fact, I felt like I opened myself up to anything I could have experienced. Anyways, I walked around, took a few pictures, and didn't see or feel anything strange. So I gathered all the information I needed and went home after. I think it was either that night or the night after this day that I first experienced something strange. As I was trying to go to sleep, I felt like I heard a name pop into my head. It wasn't a normal name to me either because it sounded very old-timey and bluntly white. I'm not white, so I don't have family members who would use this name. I actually didn't pay attention to this and just went to sleep without researching it because, I don't know, I don't know. I just didn't care enough to look into it because I thought it was strange enough that, well, I thought of this random name. Anyways, I woke up the next morning and remembered this weird sounding name, so I googled it out of curiosity. Turns out that this name that I heard, Clark Corbin, belonged to Henry Clark Corbin. He was a general at the Battle of Nashville. And that battle was in 1864, Tennessee for the Union side against the Confederacy. Thank God in parentheses. I mentioned earlier that at the park there, there was informational signs of the Civil War but I never saw his name on any of them. There were other names on them, but not his when I rechecked if I saw his name in passing, and that's how I thought of him. There was no info about him anywhere, which is why I think this was the spirit who contacted me. Whether it was the General Corbin himself or a private underneath him that was looking for him, I don't know, but regardless... It was a really cool and a bit spooky experience that added a lot of fun for me to my U.S. history class and project. I even told my professor about what happened and she seemed fascinated by it, wishing that she could have experienced something like it herself. I don't blame her because I'm a history nerd too, but I'm lucky that this was a positive experience and nothing too frightening like some of my friends and family, things that they've experienced. I think Mr. Corbin just wanted to be remembered, and he definitely gave me something to remember for life. Hiding Under the Table I lurk in the suburbs, but I'm always willing to share at least one story. Whenever I think about this event, I'm still shocked about what I saw. Whenever I tell it, I can't even believe it. I had never had anything like this happen to me. 
To give some context, my home at the time was like a ranch-style home. My family moved to this place when I was young, I'd say like 10 years old. When I moved in, I was scared to be alone at night. I felt like I was being watched and had super strange dreams. They were vivid dreams, too. So here's the layout. The living room and dining room together, and then there's a doorway into the kitchen. In the kitchen, there was a pantry with a sliding door. The space was creepy, and whenever the sliding door was open, that feeling of being watched intensified. I truly think this home was haunted. I must have been about 12 at this time that this happened, and there was a table in the home at the time that my dog would sit under. He was getting older, so I went to check on him. After checking on him and seeing that my dad was asleep on the couch, I sat with my dog under the table. I know this is weird, but I was a weird kid. The TV was off and there was no noise going on. I plugged in my headphones and played some music. I was rubbing my dog's head and he lifts his head up. I look up and take out my headphone. In front of me and my dog was a figure. It was strange. It was as if there was surprise on both ends. It looked like walking TV static. It could barely make out eyes, but I felt like it was looking at me. It turns and it fades away. I jumped out from under the table and ran to my dad. He was now awake and at the time, he hadn't seen it. And later on, he would tell me that he did see it. I was told to ignore it, apparently. I really couldn't think of a logical explanation as to what I saw, and I don't know why it was static, or why that this element of surprise was there. When I think of that part of it, it's kind of silly. I had the feeling of being watched, and my family would move away years later, and I have not had anything like this happen to me again. Did I receive an omen? I don't want to call it a shadow figure because I don't really know what it was, but all I can say is that I feel a presence behind me, the same way you can feel when someone is approaching you from behind. And I saw a black figure in my peripheral. What do I believe, or... I guess while I do believe in the paranormal, I've never had anything happen in my presence. So I don't know what to make of it. I was really freaked out by it because it felt more like an omen than anything. I can see stuff in my peripheral all the time, and so I usually dismiss stuff like this. Except my co-worker, who I was talking to when it happened. They had also seen it. We were standing there having a conversation when I saw a figure in the black just sort of pop up over my right shoulder. I didn't think anything of it, just thought another coworker was trying to squeeze behind me to get by. I could feel their presence from one side going all the way toward the other side, exactly like somebody trying to get by. So I leaned forward a bit and then looked over my left shoulder to see who had squeezed behind me, but no one was there. Thinking somebody was playing a prank on me, I quickly turned to look back the other way. Not a single person had tried to walk by. I looked back at my co-worker I was talking to. And without me saying a word, he said, I saw it too. He wasn't freaked out like I was, though. I started to explain what I saw, to make sure we really saw the same thing, and he said, almost like someone wearing a black hoodie. That's exactly what it was like. It didn't feel malevolent or threatening, just a presence. Again, I've never experienced anything like it, and this had actually happened not even an hour into the new year. I worked night shift, so we were working during the flip into the new year. Which led me to think that it was an omen. Later that night after I got home from... I just... large chunk of my problem tooth broke off. I have a tooth I need to get pulled, a molar that never cut, so it ended up growing in wrong. Now, I can't imagine I had this massive, to me, 
experience of a possible open happen just to tell me my tooth is about to chip. I don't know, knock on wood, but nothing has happened since, good or bad. I think I've seen a shadow or a thing or a person twice my life, but I'm still skeptical on the paranormal and can't quite explain it. So the first story, I was around five. I'd say I was either four or five, at most six. The year was somewhere around 2010. I used to live in a department, and one night, I was taking a bath by myself upstairs while my mother and sister were downstairs. After I finished my bath, I got out of the tub and put my towel on, and as I was standing in the bedroom, I was looking out in the hallway, inside of the hallway, I could clearly and visibly see a shadow moving from the bathroom into my sister's room, where it seemingly walked out to my sister's door and disappeared. The strange thing is, is what it looked like, because it was what I used to call the finger man. It looked like when you take your hand and pretend to make a walking motion with your pointer and middle finger pointed down, you know? I was so scared and confused by what I said, but I... Remember running down the stairs, asking my mom and sister if they were just upstairs, which they weren't, and they laughed at me after describing what I saw. Later in life, when I was in my house years after it moved from the apartment, around 2012-2013-ish, I was getting ready for school one day. And as I was in my room, I remember I could very clearly see a very long shadow arm reaching in from the hallway. It knocked down one of my hats I had hanging on my wall. I know I wasn't dreaming or imagining things because I very clearly saw my hat laying on the floor. I then went down the hall to my parents' bedroom where the door was shut and after I knocked and my mom opened it, I asked her if she was in the hall and knocked over my hat. She was obviously confused and said no. I just went back to my room confused myself and a little scared. The weird thing is, years later, around eight months ago, my mom and grandmother were visiting me in North Carolina since I'm in the Marines and I was doing infantry training while I was on 96. That's a four-day weekend. And the topic of ghosts came up, especially since we were watching those shows. And, well, I brought up that story again and my mother mentioned that in the original apartment that we lived in, my sister supposedly also had encounters in her room and was just generally creeped out. And my grandmother added that when she stayed the night there, she stayed in my sister's room and felt the same feeling. I can't exactly remember everything she was saying, but I think she may have mentioned hearing a growl and getting scratched too. But again, it's been eight months. I don't remember everything they mentioned, but they did in fact claim weird things to happen in my sister's room which is the same room the shadow figure I saw stopped at and disappeared. So still don't really know exactly what I was encountering, but I haven't seen anything after that. And I am still skeptical to the paranormal. I even went to the Saratoga Sanitarium, which is supposedly one of the most haunted places in Saratoga. Nothing's happened there, and I've been to supposedly haunted places before and had nothing happen. The Girl from the Ring When I was in 7th grade, I believed but didn't believe in ghosts. So I did an experiment to see what would happen, and I regret it to this day. So to start off this traumatizing story, one night I decided to search up rituals to do so I could see if I had some kind of experience. I don't remember the exact ritual I did, but I do remember all the lights must be off that are visible and it must be dark outside. Then I did it, and immediately after I finished I began disrespecting whatever may be out there. You aren't real. Show yourself. Don't be a pussy. And do something, bitch. 
and almost right after I went silent, the temperature dropped and I got chills so fast. I immediately ran and turned the lights on and ran upstairs because it scared the hell out of me. About four hours later by this time, I forgot what I did, and when I went downstairs to get ready for bed because I had school the next morning, I was kind of skipping down the stairs casually and I jumped across the tiny hallway. To my right, to my peripheral vision, I see a dirty white dress, bluish pale bare feet and arms half covered, long black hair covering her face, and she was hovering. I tell you, she was hovering, at least three inches off the ground, too. It also kind of looked like she was hunching her back. Anyway, as I realized what I had just seen, I bolted to the bed and jumped under my blanket so fast and covered my face. I slept with the light on, I was too terrified to even look. The temperature dropped super cold again, and I had to lay there all alone in the basement by myself. The story doesn't end here. My dream, it was almost as if I woke up and looked at the doorway into the other room and she was looking back at me. For some reason, I wasn't scared of her and approached her. She was friendly and I asked her if she was hungry and she kind of shook her head yes. And magically, I pulled out nachos. But she shook her head no and then again I pulled out raw meat and she started devouring it. Then I woke up. It was time to get ready for school, and like everyone else, when I first woke up, I forgot what I dreamed about. As I was putting my socks on half awake, I heard a whoosh. Looked up very fast, like what the fuck. And then I felt the gust of wind hit me like something just passed the hallway really fast, and then it hit me. Thought about what happened the night before, and boom. Just like that, my heart sank. It got cold immediately. My heart was pounding, so I started speeding, getting ready so I can get the hell out of there. And then again, whoosh, and I saw something go by very quickly. I sat there silently in shock and scared as hell and stared at the hallway just waiting for something to happen again. And after just a few seconds, a little red ball, I'm not even joking, straight out of a horror movie. I was in disbelief until I heard it thud hit against the wall. I didn't know what to do. Then I heard my neighbor honking. They took me to school every morning. I hurried and flipped my jacket inside out, put the hood over my face to avoid having to really see anything, and ran up the stairs and out the door. When I got home, my dad stayed home sick, so he asked. Or rather, I asked, excuse me, and he said, I don't know, I just woke up to get ready, and when I went to the bathroom, I started throwing up dramatically. I must have blacked out because I woke up lying in puke. Heard someone walking around, but when I got up, no one was home. Then I told him what happened, and he was in shock. We proceeded to bless the house with scriptures from the Bible, and I felt a lot safer, but still felt like something was watching me but never had another encounter with her for the next four years until one day with my girlfriend, who I never told about, mostly because nobody believed me. We were getting fast food late at night, and randomly, she says, there's a creepy-looking girl standing by that tree behind us. And I didn't even have to look to know. I asked her to give me a description, and she gave me the exact description of her. It was definitely her. And that's my scary experience. We've seen her twice since then, but it's always out of town, not by where it first happened. And who knows, I may see her again eventually. A ghost slash entity that was flaming magenta I've had many ghost or experiences with even things other than entities before, but this one in particular stuck with me and been in my mind ever since it happened about six months ago. I was going to a friend's house after we had agreed to hang out. 
It was a big house, one of those old 1800s kind of houses, dead center of town almost. I had a key, so I let myself in because I figured she was upstairs on the third floor and wouldn't hear the front door if I knocked. I called her name. No answer on the first floor, so I began to walk upstairs to the second floor where I could hear, where, well, where she could be hearing me more clearly. And I heard something, and it sounded like a woman was quietly talking on the phone in one of the bedrooms on the second floor, the one that I was now on currently. So naturally, I assumed that my friend was behind one of the nearby closed doors and that I didn't want to be rude. I figured she knew I was there, but was finishing up a phone call and needed a minute. So I sat on the ground against one of the hallway walls, directly looking at the closed door of the room I thought that she was in. Directly looking at the bottom of the door, there was enough space between the door and the floor to see shadowed footprints move from left to right and from right to left. I assumed they were hers. She was still sort of just talking on what I thought was a phone as I watched the set of shadowy footprints turn into two pairs. I had seen four shadow feet, two pairs, and they walked side to side on the floor. I suddenly thought, or maybe she isn't on the phone, maybe she's talking to someone in there. She's not alone in the room. Still, I didn't want to be rude and interrupt, especially if another person was in there with her. Then it happened. A loud smack of a hand hit the floor underneath the door, still behind it. It wasn't a shadow of a hand, it was a real hand, only a pale magenta color. I had seen smack its palm onto the floor underneath the door. It had to be directly behind the door for me to see it as plainly as I did. Like it was definitely meant for me to be startled and pay attention. The pale magenta color startled me more than the loud smack. It almost looked like the steam that comes off your skin when you get out of a hot shower bright magenta, somewhat matching the pale magenta of its skin. Then a crooked scream of a face peeked through the space between the door and the floor, looking directly at me with this hateful expression of a silent scream. It was not my friend's face. It was the face of a woman I did not know. There was no sound, not even the talking I'd heard before, but... It felt like I could feel the scream this face was making and hear it in a weird, silent sort of way. Hard to explain. And it was directly at me. Its eyes were like normal eyes, except they were almost ablaze in appearance, and the pupils were huge, surrounded by hot pink magenta irises. They were pissed. Its hair looked like the hair of Lava Girl. Skin a pale magenta terrifying magenta eyes and her skin looked steamed. I jumped up scared as fuck at what I had just clearly seen as plain as day, ran downstairs. I ran into my friend who was coming up the stairs from the first floor while I was running down them from the second. Meaning that she was never behind that door in the first place. And why didn't she answer when I called her in the first, you know, but, well, don't know. But she did believe me. A lot of weird things had been seen in this house over the years, but that did little to comfort me. Still, I think about this experience, and what does it mean? What was it? It was human in appearance, minus the monochrome magenta and seemingly fiery look. Why was it silently screaming at me? Why did it smack its hand down like that? What the actual fuck? I don't believe in ghosts. However, one afternoon I was home alone. My wife was out running errands. I spent a lot of time home alone, so it wasn't unusual in any way. I was sitting up in my room on my computer, as I often was, and I was scrolling through social media or watching videos, and I heard my wife come in the front door. It sounded like she was carrying some plastic grocery bags from shopping. This was a pretty common, ex you know, occurrence as she loves making excuses to get out of the house and I'm more of a homebody. I got the notification on my phone that the kitchen had sensed movement. 
The door in the kitchen leads out into our entry hallway, so you can see people pass by the kitchen door as they cross the hall. Then the living room camera alerted shortly after. Again, nothing unusual. We have kids, so we set the cameras up in the family areas to keep an eye on them, especially when they play video games and such. They also come in handy when the kids get in arguments or try lying to us. They also allow us to speak to them if we run errands and leave the home alone. They're older. So after taking note of the alerts, I kept scrolling away, awaiting my wife to come upstairs to the bedroom. After about 20 minutes or so, I couldn't hear her, and the motion alerts had stopped. The feeling you get when someone is in your house. Well, that feeling was gone. I listened closely, but couldn't hear anything. Babe, I called toward the stairs, but there was no response. I got off the bed and started down the steps, calling for her as I went. There was no response. I checked all the rooms and was puzzled that she wasn't there. I knew for certain I had heard her and I definitely felt her presence in the house. I stepped outside to see if she had run back to the car for something, but her car wasn't there. Now I was really puzzled, but I eventually arrived at the conclusion that she had forgotten something and ran back to town. thought it was strange she didn't come up or say anything, but maybe she had thought I was napping. I made my way back up the stairs and decided I would give her a call. I called up her cell phone and when she picked up I asked her where she had went. She said she was still out running errands. I asked, why didn't you come up and see me when you stopped by a minute ago? She replied, what do you mean? I've been gone for only a couple of hours. What? You were down there for like ten minutes. I heard you come in carrying bags. There was emotion alert and everything. I swore it was you who the hell else would come in. There was a pause as we both considered this. She started to get worried and said I should check all the cameras, and I agreed and told her I'd call her back shortly. Now my heart was starting to pound a little bit. Who the hell came into my home, and why did they walk in and then leave? Had they taken anything? Was this the first time, and were my children safe here? Nervously, I pulled up her motion cameras on the phone and started to scroll through the kitchen footage to just well, before I walked down the steps. I pressed play on the recording and waited. I heard a slam and a few knocking sounds like someone was coming inside. Then the grocery bag noises started. Now my heart was really pounding. Someone had definitely come inside and I was about to watch them stroll through my home. As I leaned in closer to the screen, a dark shadow suddenly loomed into view and crossed my entry hallway past the kitchen door. I could make it out as plain as day as it passed by. I was in complete disbelief. What in the hell was that? The camera was slightly distorted from it. It didn't really have a shape that was recognizable. It was just a shadow, shapeless cloud. I switched to the living room camera and played it again. Same noises, only this time I watched in full view as the shadow came from the hallway into the center of the living room. Then the entire room went dim on the camera. This was mid-afternoon. Were the cameras messing up? No. I had heard and felt someone in my home. I've been here ten years and have never been wrong. What was this thing? The scariest part? Just as I came down the stairs on the recording, the room lit back up again like normal. It was like a sunny day when a dark cloud rolls over and your whole room goes dim. Only there was not a cloud in the sky that day. I've never been more terrified in my life as I was sitting in that house alone watching the footage of me walking down the stairs towards whatever the hell it was that I saw. I watched it over and over in disbelief and I knew I had heard somebody walk into my house. I felt their presence. There was no question in my mind that my wife had come home. Only she hadn't. It was just noises and a strange shadow. I've never once been one to be afraid of doors moving, strange noises, or thoughts that somebody in my home was there when there wasn't. 
I've always been able to tell when somebody comes into my home from the familiar sounds and feeling. In fact, it's never happened since. I called my mom I was so freaked out. I explained what happened and showed the footage. She shrugged it off, as did my wife, and in hindsight, I guess it wasn't really much to see. Some noises and a weird shadow. Easily explained away with logic when he didn't have a feeling of knowing someone was there to accompany it. But to me, it was the most terrifying experience and the closest encounter I'd ever experienced myself. I don't believe in ghosts and I never really have, but I know something or someone was in my home that day. Helped soul pass on. I feel I have medium abilities, but I do not encourage contact. I've had multiple contacts with spirits separated by five to ten years on average. One was terrifying when I was younger. I'm not at all frightened now. Some spirits are quite unpleasant and present is scary. Some spirits are quite unpleasant and present as scary. Hmm. But we all have the ability to banish unpleasant entities by insisting they leave and calling on your higher powers for help. Muslim, Jewish, Buddhist, Christian. The higher power is the same. It's there for all. The more you embrace your spiritual, the stronger your personal protection abilities. I had a suicide victim follow me home. Somewhat recently, I was in a state forest on a trail motorcycle. I stopped to enjoy the nature. Looking up a steep canyon, I saw a ball of smoke about the size of a football floating through the trees. The smoke didn't roll or change shape as it floated. I watched it float directly heading toward me. It got very close to the ground, floated over my feet, rose up to eye level and disappeared. I got a vision of a grizzled old guy that looked rough, kind of homeless. I was sure I was contacted. I asked my guides to make him leave, but he didn't leave. Later at my home, the knocking started, and he did it frequently, knocking sounds on the wall and the ceiling. I tried to make him go with the prayers of protection, but what I got was a mental picture of what he was like. An unpleasant pest that annoyed everybody. A person anyone would avoid. I did some internet research on the forest and I found an older man my age that had hung himself near to where I saw the smoke. And now he was in my home. One morning as I awoke, he spoke quite audibly right into my ear. I couldn't understand what he was saying, but I did understand that he was very confused and wanted help. He was relieved that I could hear him. I took a different approach. I prayed and asked for guidance on how to help. Furthermore, I told the higher power the next morning when I awoke I would say exactly what came to my mind. The next morning, I didn't think about it. I just said what came to my mind, which was, I forgive you. God forgives you. It's now time for you to forgive yourself. Although you are afraid, your family loves you and wants you to come home. A very brief but sincere statement. It worked. Over a few days, the vision of him became more peaceful, less grizzled, and the environment became much lighter and he went home. I Disappeared When I was in junior high school, I was a member of a gang. Nothing like what you see in movies, just a bunch of dumb white kids sneaking around late at night causing fairly innocent mischief. One night we were wandering around random neighborhoods, and it was probably between midnight and 1 a.m. We came across a large party full of high school teenagers. They were drinking and yelling and playing loud music. 
One of the members of our gang began mouthing off, shouting obscenities at them, and suddenly they were chasing us down the street. Most of my friends jumped fences or scattered into neighboring yards, but myself and another member ran down the middle of the street. It was fairly dark, but there were street lights and a lot of ambient light. The largest group of parties were chasing us, and something inside me told me to stop and stand still. I knew I couldn't outrun them as they were quickly gaining on us, so I stopped. The entire group of guys ran right past me, several of them within a foot of me and tackled the person I was running with. They roughed him up quite a bit, and I and they asked him his name. I heard everything that was said, and I watched everything they did. I was waiting for them to turn on me next, but they never did. Instead, they finished with him, and they walked back up the street right past me. Not one of them looked at me, even though I was literally standing in the middle of the street no less than a few inches from them. I waited until they passed, and then I walked over to my friend to help get off the ground, and he was shocked to see me. He asked me where I went. I told him I was standing there the whole time. He insisted I wasn't. He said he was running with me for a second, and I was just gone the next. I recited the whole conversation, and he was incredulous. He insists I was nowhere to be seen, and I've always wondered how this was even possible. Has anyone else ever heard of or experienced anything like this? Is this weird? Okay, so I kind of believe in ghosts, but also kind of don't believe. Like I would say I'm a 5 out of 10 believer. Anyways, my grandma, who I was very close to, passed on November 18th of last year, 2023, in case anyone is reading this years from now. She passed on a Saturday afternoon. I'm a 14-year-old girl and a freshman in high school. My mom is a teacher at my same high school, and it's not as bad as it sounds. So, on Friday at around noon, my mom gets a call saying that my family has moved my grandma to comfort care. For anyone who doesn't know, comfort care is pretty much care for people about to pass away. They set up a morphine trip so it doesn't hurt and just try to make them feel as comfortable as possible. My mom, obviously being extremely upset, took me out of class and we left school early. We live in a different state than the rest of my family, so we couldn't go visit grandma because we couldn't afford plane tickets. My mom can't drive by herself. But my mom still wanted to be at home when my grandma's passing happened. Anyways, me and my mom got cozy in the living room, tried to lighten the mood by throwing on some TV, and pretty much just waited. At around 7.30 p.m. the same night, I was heating up some food in the microwave and I was just standing at my kitchen counters just waiting for my food. When I closed my eyes to blink, I saw the number 214. I opened my eyes and I was weirded out why I randomly saw that number but just brushed it off as nothing. So everything was fine the rest of the night and when I woke up Saturday morning, I was happy my grandma didn't pass during the night. But I had just had a gut feeling. I knew something was off. I tried staying awake with my mom, but at around 1.30 I fell asleep. An hour or two later, my mom woke me up with the, new, well, with the news that my grandma passed. I was fucking heartbroken, and me and my mom cried the rest of the day. And somehow we scraped together enough money so we could fly to Nevada, where the rest of the family lives. That was for her funeral. This is where shit gets kind of weird. Throughout the trip until I'm about to tell you, the number 214 kept popping up in my head, and I would just ignore it. Anyways, at her funeral we were talking to my aunt who had been taking care of my grandma for a year before she died, and who stayed the entire month my grandma was in the hospital. My aunt told me that my grandma kept saying, I do not want to pass in front of my kids. I refuse to do it when any of them are in the room. Then she said that at around 2 p.m. she left the room and left my grandma alone. 
She said she was only gone for 15 to 20 minutes when she got the... Well, she got news that she had passed. Then she told me that once she got everything figured out, my grandma's exact time of death was 2.14 p.m. I have more to say regarding my grandma's death, but it's nothing too crazy. Anyways, is that weird? Yeah, kind of. I mean, I just feel that the time 2.14 kept just popping in my head and she died at that exact time. But is it just a weird coincidence? Am I just overthinking all of this? I just kind of need a second opinion. Also, sorry for the long-ass post. I have a bit of ranting. Well, a habit of ranting. George, our cigar-loving, frugal, otherworldly house resident. In about 2010, my little family lived in a small town in Victoria. We lived in an apartment, little sort of unit complex where older people had lived, and it had suddenly become available for rent. We had been in a domestic violence situation, so seven months pregnant me and my two children at the time had moved into this little apartment. My teenager lived in a room that had a window bordering a large garden that we shared with all the units. So often her room would be quite messy. So I'd go and tidy it up a bit. I would also smell the smell of cigarettes. Or what I thought was cigarettes but ended up being stronger, more like cigar smoke. I spoke to her about it, and to this day, and she's now 25, she is adamant that she never smoked at all until she was 17, and hated it. And it was very often, honestly. I actually got to the point where I searched her room thinking there were going to be cigarettes in there, like I stripped it, and there were never any cigarettes anywhere at all. So then, we also had some occurrences where, I mean, at the time, we were all girls, so leaving the toilet seat up never really happened for us. But the toilet seat would regularly be left up. And after asking everybody, which consisted of a toddler, nappies, a fastidious teenager, and me, it seemed completely impossible that we had been leaving the toilet seat up so regularly. Like a few times, maybe after cleaning it to let it dry. But every single day... Not at all. We also regularly had the kettle, microwave, and television turned off at the wall. We'd be sitting there hearing the kitchen door open and then the click of the switches one by one. We would often have lights switched off and it seemed like somebody was taken care of, like I suppose maybe our electricity bills thinking that we were leaving things on too much. But also just that continuous sort of waft of cigar smoke. So we had a plumbing issue one time. Had a plumber person that had been servicing the apartment for years. I came out and asked him straight out. Was there anybody who lived here who smoked cigars that you know of? And he laughed and said, Uh, that'll be George. I immediately got some chills down my spine and I asked him, What do you mean? And he said, Well, George was a younger guy who moved to the area and worked as a mechanic for a long time. He eventually moved to these little apartments when his wife had passed away, and he loved cigars, and he smoked them all the time. He ended up getting a lung disease, which eventually he passed away from. He had a terrible cough, but he was also extremely stingy. He didn't like to use his heater in the winter, and often the house would be very, very cold, because he seemed to be like he didn't want to waste money on electricity. That made sense to me, because often all of my surplus electricity appliances would be just switched off the wall. And that pervasive smell of cigarette or cigar smoke would just keep wafting around. But being in that particular bedroom that my teenager was using was a little bit more chilling in the fact that George had actually passed away in that room, and was later found there by his family. So as well as being extremely sad, it was also a little bit spooky. And we came to just affectionately refer to him as George, and when things got switched off, we would say thank you. When there was a really strong smell of cigar smoke, we would ask him to smoke outside. 
And he would also, sort of, well, I guess we would also ask him to remember to put the toilet seat down. Spooky Boo in the Creepy Farmhouse Cupboard A long time ago when my daughters were quite young and my teenager was about 14, we lived in what was very likely one of the first houses in that street, which was probably about 60 or 70 years old. It was so old, in fact, that the quarter of an acre block that we lived on had the house facing with the front door facing the backyard. The back door was facing the driveway, where we could just sort of park, and it was kind of back to front. Unfortunately, the owners had sold the house, and we needed to leave. We had secured another property, and we were almost finished packing everything into our moving van. It had all the usual farmhouse charm. It was beautiful. We loved it, too. One thing, though, was a storage-type cupboard. Up above the linen cupboard, I I think it's quite common to have a bit of storage area high up in an older house. It was a small old wooden door with a very strong lock on it. It was very odd. We always felt a bit strange about it. But of course, being curious, we tried to open it many, many times. But it was completely jammed shut. My littlest daughter was and is extremely sensitive to lots of dark stuff. As well as just general mystical stuff. And she would have these interesting dreams where she would be what could probably be called having an out-of-body experience. She would travel to all different places and attend all different kinds of events, such as car accidents, hospital operations, bedsides of sick people, lots of strange things. She used, well, she used to be called Spooky Boo. So the last night before we were leaving, she woke up with a nightmare. She was only three, by the way. But she was having a really terrible nightmare about the cupboard opening, and when it opened, a long, dark, clawed hand appeared to be coming out of it, and that frightened her enough to be awake and screaming. I came to her straight away, cuddled her and comforted her, and she came into my bed that night. In the morning, we packed up the rest of our boxes and had one more look around before leaving. That's when my eldest daughter and I looked up and noticed that that cupboard was completely open. We immediately turned around and left, and we never went back. We still think of that farmhouse and all the fun that we had there. It was an amazing house. It had become a refuge for us, and we felt very free and happy there. But that never took away the chill that we felt when we thought of that strange cupboard. There is a ghost cat living in my parents' house. Years ago, when I was 28, I was living at home and I experienced something that made a childhood mystery make sense for the first time. So I was laying in my bed with a chair and a footstool slightly to my right. I was scrolling on my phone when out of the corner of my eye, I see it get dark right above or on the chair. I look up to see the shadow of what looked like a cat turning in a circle and then jumping off the footstool. Just as you'd imagine a cat jumping off, same motion. And then it went under my bed. I don't know what came over me, but I looked under it to find nothing there. I sprint across the hall to my sister's room to see where her cat was, only to find him sitting with her. I told her what happened, pretty creeped out the rest of the night. I do think I saw it once more pass outside my door, but I can't confirm. It could have been my sister's cat that time, but it just felt like it wasn't. So as I continued to think about what I so clearly saw, I mean, sort of made me think about something that happened to my brother when we were younger. My sister was getting ready to paint her room and recruited her younger siblings to scrap tape and pull out the staples left behind. It was mainly left over by her 2000s posters, but anyway, my brother and I were just standing there, side by side, working, and that's when he starts screaming and runs downstairs. My sister and I are confused and follow him and find that he is a huge and very deep slit on the top of his foot. 
When my parents asked what happened, we couldn't give them any explanation because we truly didn't know. This was not just a scrape. He went over to the ER, which my parents were kind of nervous to do since they absolutely had no explanation, and ended up getting 12 stitches. It was an experience that all of us remember vividly because of how wild it was. It still bothers my brother a lot, really. He doesn't like talking about ghost cats, but my experience had me reflecting on that instance and how it makes sense that it could have been the ghost cat. It is said that paranormal activity increases when there are changes being made to their surroundings, which we were getting ready to paint low to the ground where a cat would be. A scratch it was like a pretty clean cut so since then both my sister and dad have seen something out of the corner of their eyes and my mom felt something brush against her leg while sitting at the kitchen table my brother brought something home from prison My oldest brother moved out when I was a little child. I can't even remember him living in our house. I live with my dad and sister. Anyways, he got into trouble with the law because of a domestic dispute involving drinking and his wife kicked him out. My dad is a saint, so he won't let him move back in with us. Everything was fine at first. The first few weeks we would play card games and talk and watch TV. Then it came time for him to be sentenced to go to prison. He only ended up spending two months there. But when he came back, he had an entirely different demeanor and energy. The only way I could describe it is his negativity and darkness. At first, you could chalk it up to him having a negative experience. But he would reminisce seemingly fondly about his experience and claim that it was no big deal. My sister and I are very spiritually sensitive. Runs in the family on the female side. There were three distinct instances that solidified the idea that there was more going on than anything emotional or physical or birds. The first instance I was walking up the basement stairs and I heard footsteps at the top. I glanced up to see what looked like my brother crossing the threshold of the door frame. I could even tell you he was wearing blue jeans, a red polo shirt, and yellow Timberland-style boots. I walk upstairs and look around the corner, expecting to find my brother when my dad tells me he's actually two hours away in Buffalo. My dad and I were home alone, but he was wearing a blue shirt. The second instance, I had just fed the cats and decided to head upstairs to go to bed. I get halfway up the stairs before I hear a man's voice angrily yelling at me from the exact same place in the hallway where I saw the apparition. The third instance, my sister and I were pulling an all-nighter on the couch because I had a doctor's appointment in the morning. My sister says she has to go pee, so she gets up and walks towards the hallway and then immediately proceeds to turn around and sit back down. She starts facing the wall and crying. I ask her what's wrong, and she's hesitant to tell me. After some coaxing, she tells me that she saw a huge shadow figure cross the hallway, right at the top of the basement stairs. So that is three distinct manifestations, all in the same spot with two different witnesses. Since it scared my sister, I decided the next day to cleanse the area and also the space where my brother was staying. I cleansed the entire basement with sage smoke and blessed salt water. Never had anything happen again like that. He moved out shortly after, and I put together a few years later that it was a fractured part of himself. Like a PK manifestation. As far as I know, he's still walking around leaving pieces of himself wherever he goes. And for anybody listening, what is a PK manifestation? And excuse the bird. Can anyone tell me what me and my friends ran into in the woods? Me and my friends had a sleepover and were really bored the next day. So we decided that we wanted to play manhunt in the woods near my house. 
We got to the woods and we played three or four rounds. And at that point it was really dark and we made a decision I regret, sort of. Which we decided to continue playing even though it was practically pitch black. We thought that would make it much more funner. My friend, let's call her Ellen, was she was the seeker. So me and my other friend, Leroy, went to hide in the woods. I was hiding in a bush area, and if you were walking on the main path, you looked out towards me and you shouldn't be able to see me, so I thought I had the best place ever. Then I heard shuffling, like somebody dragging something behind them. I looked around and I couldn't see anything until I looked at the path directly in front of me. I saw a man walking up. He looked like he was struggling to walk, but not just because he couldn't. It looked like he had just learned how to walk. That really freaked me out. But what scared me even more is when I moved forward to see him closer. I snap a twig. He looked directly at me. Well, I don't even know if I could say he looked directly at me because he had no face, no eyes, no nothing, just little dips where his eyes and nose and mouth should be. He didn't run towards me. He didn't do anything. He just looked at each other for a couple of seconds. That was before my adrenaline kicked in. I army crawled the hell out of there. I ran to Ellen, saw what, you know. And then we met up and she was just as frantic as I was. We both described the exact same man and we both knew at that moment that we both ran into whatever the hell that was. Freaked out and we ran to look for our other friend that we called him. We were screaming for him, but he wouldn't come out. Finally, he picked up the phone and he told us that to come to, I guess, a certain tree. We went there, and immediately he frantically told us about seeing the exact same man, and we don't know what this was. We're all absolutely terrified, so we decide that we're going to go back up into the woods and see if we can find it after looking for a couple of minutes. One of my friends, Ellen, who doesn't really know anything about paranormal stuff, and all that, starts going on about how this could be an S-walker. She says multiple times, even saying the name, Wendigo. And we totally freak out and told her to stop saying the name. And then we hear a high-pitched, blood-curdling scream come from the woods. We bolted out of there. Everything around us feels uncanny. And even to this day, when I go back to those woods, I don't recognize the neighborhood I was running through when I was sprinting home. Even though I've lived here my whole life. Everything felt so uncanny until I got back to my house, and even though it was months and months ago, I still frequently hear voices and see shadow figures when I'm around that area. I don't know what that was, but whatever it is, I feel that it's not leaving me or my friends. My friends have also had the same encounters with the voices and the figures. Can anyone else tell me what could have seen that day in the woods and how to protect myself against that. It's never ever come closer enough to do anything, but I hate that I can see it when I'm outside. It's never inside my home, and it's always outside. And the dark figures, they look like shadows moving around, and I can hear voices, and it seems like something is walking behind me and my friends, even though there's nothing there. This all started after we saw the man with no face in the woods. So... Can anyone tell me, what was that? Stories my mom told me from when she used to live in a haunted house. So my mom used to be a professional ice skater. She traveled the world for a few years when she was 18 to 19, and that would have been in the mid-70s. She quit ice skating and moved back in with her parents. They lived in an apartment about a shop in a small seaside town called Cleveleys. I said that wrong, I'm sure. But it's about a ten minute drive away from Blackpool. When she moved in, she said right away something felt off about the place. She never said she felt scared, but just different. She said the first time anything strange happened was a few days after she moved in. She was fast asleep in bed and her dad came in to bring her a cup of tea. He said something along the lines of, did you fall back asleep? 
she asked what he meant. He said that he had heard her get up and heard the bathroom door open and close and footsteps. A few days later, she walked back into the room and it was like a thick pipe of smoke. Now, this was really odd as none of them smoked a pipe. And she said, from this time, the smell of pipe smoke and unexplained appearance of pipe smoke was a regular thing. She also said that things would regularly move around the house. So if you put your keys down on the table when you went back to pick them up, sometime later they would be missing. The weirdest thing she said happened was occasionally they would hear what sounded like a party going on next door in the middle of the night. Loud music, people singing and laughing, and then all of a sudden it would just stop. The only issue with this is that the only building connected to theirs was a bank which would be closed at night. She said that when the landlord came to get the rent, she mentioned the strange things going on around him, and he said that it's strange that my mom mentioned the pipe smoke and the back room because the landlord's father used to smoke a pipe and passed away in the back bedroom. To me, this sounded really scary and unsettling, but she said she never felt scared or upset. There's one more thing that I'm not sure about mentioning, as it's really to do with ghosts and making my mom sound a bit crazy, but she also said that at the time she lived in the flat, she could tell who was going to call before the phone rang, or who'd be at the door before the bell went. I know what I saw, and it haunts me to this day. I was 17 years old. The cool thing to do at the time was to go to the Emberville Asylum in Chester County to explore. For backstory, the asylum was abandoned since the 1980s. At one point, it was a mental institution. It was an elementary school, and then it was a hospital, then a home for the mentally unwell. The asylum consists of 10 to 12 buildings, each the size of an elementary school, of all of them dilapidated. There's an unmarked cemetery across the street with numbers for all the graves, but no names. I went with a group of about eight people at about 10 p.m. We went into several of the closer buildings, and they were creepy, but nothing out of the ordinary. We proceeded to what we referred to as the main asylum building. It was the biggest in the original building. This one gave me the creeps. There were gurneys in the hallways, things that were scattered everywhere, and it just had a kind of a cold vibe to it. We started moving through the building and found our way to a stairwell. I took the lead position and got walking. My buddy and I made our way to the fourth floor and realized the others weren't behind us. We went on ahead anyway. We approached a hallway intersection where to the left and right of us were large day room type rooms that had hallways that lead to open rooms that were widening as sort of as you entered them. Before I turned the corner, my buddy asked me if I had said something to which I responded no. He told me he swore he heard something. At this point, I turned the corner and pointed my flashlight toward the day room. In clear view, I saw something cross left to right inside the threshold of the door. It had the figure of a person, but with a light directly on it. it. had no pigment. It was like the absence of color or light, blacker than the night outside. It had dimensions to it, no legs, human-shaped. I turned tail and ran, never again went back at night. I left feeling cold and terrified. It stuck with me since that day, and I think about it a lot. A spirit that presents as a female keeps showing itself to me. I have been experiencing paranormal activity for seven years now, and have believed it for about six. I started seeing this female spirit one year after moving into my new house in 2019. I had just gotten done being outside all day long during the summer and hanging out with my family so I decided to take a shower. During my shower, I kept getting this feeling of being watched. 
Then I heard knocking on the bathroom door, followed by my dad's voice saying my name. So I opened the front door, figuring that he needed something from the bathroom. But when I opened it, no one was there. So I closed the door and figured I was just hearing things. And then I heard the knocking in my dad's voice a second time. So I figured he must have been messing with me to scare me. But again, when I opened the door, no one was there. I finished my shower and shrugged it off. Then I was looking at myself in the mirror and sort of popping pimples when I caught a glimpse of something in the mirror. So I looked up again and was frozen in fear. There was a lady with dark brown hair, makeup running down her face, and a white dress on. Her skin looked pale. Then I turned around and she was still standing and staring at me. It sounded like she was mumbling or whispering something. I couldn't make it out. After standing there again frozen in fear, I ran out of the bathroom and screamed. After that experience, not only has this female spirit been presenting itself, but so have other spirits, but not exactly like this one. Not as clear and in human form. Most just as shadows.